After Casanova's big night, Price returned for more horror work in the 1954 shocker, The Mad Magician. Don Gallico, played by Vincent Price, is a magician performing for the first time under the stage name Gallico the Great. He is also a master makeup artist and performs portions of his act in disguise impersonating other famous magicians. For the finale of his show, he unveils his most dangerous trick, the lady and the buzzsaw, never before attempted by anyone. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the most dangerous exhibition ever attempted and I must ask for complete silence. The least disturbance could cause this experiment to end in tragedy. However, before he can perform the illusion, the curtain lowers and the show is canceled. To Gallico's surprise, the cancellation was ordered by his boss, Mr. Orman, played by Donald Randolph. Gallico works for Ormond in his day job, building props, and his contract states that all props built by Gallico are property of Ormond, who has a court injunction to stop Gallico's performance. Now listen you, I want this trick back in my New York studio before noon tomorrow. And if you know what's good for you, you'll quit playing actor and get back on your job. Back at the Ormond office, we learn that Gallico has another legitimate reason for disliking his boss. He used his money and influence to steal Gallico's wife. Ormond unwisely taunts Gallico, insulting both him and his ex-wife. Gallico snaps and loses his cool, and Ormond loses his head. Later that evening, a local football team is celebrating their victory over the rivals with a huge bonfire celebration. Gallico puts his makeup skills to work once again by disguising himself as Ormond. He takes the body, minus the head, which he hides in a leather bag, and dresses it in the rival team's uniform, making it look like a dummy. He tosses the effigy atop the pyre where it is engulfed in flames. Gallico's stage assistant, Karen Lee, played by Mary Murphy, stops by his studio for a visit. When she leaves, she mistakenly picks up the leather bag containing Ormond's severed head. Gallico panics. Doubly so when he learns that Karen forgot the bag and left it in a cab, but he manages to track down the cabbie before anyone discovers its gruesome contents. That evening, Gallico again disguises himself as Ormond and rents a room under the pseudonym Ward Jameson from a woman named Alice Prentice, played by Lanita Lane, who is a mystery novelist. Gallico's ex-wife Claire, played by Ava Gabor, shows up the next day at his studio looking for Ormond. Gallico tells her he doesn't know where Ormond is, but she grows suspicious. The bodies soon start to pile up as Gallico digs himself deeper and deeper into his web of lies. First, Claire confronts him at his apartment while he is disguised as Ormond. She recognizes him through the disguise and yanks off his mask. She realizes the truth that he has murdered Ormond, but she doesn't care as that means she is now free and will inherit all of his wealth. She suggests that she and Gallico get back together, which throws him into a rage. Gallico strangles her in anger. Later, a rival magician named the Great Rinaldi, played by John Emery, sneaks into Gallico's studio just as he is holding a private demonstration of a new trick he's devised called the Crematorium. He confronts Gallico afterwards, blackmailing him by informing him that he knows Ormond was murdered and will go to the authorities unless Gallico gives him the new invention. Gallico attacks Rinaldi and disposes of his body in the new device. But Gallico, now a multiple murderer, has aroused the suspicions of several folks. Mrs. Prentice, the mystery novelist, along with his assistant's boyfriend, Lieutenant Alan Bruce, played by Patrick O'Neill, a detective on the police force, begin to close in on the truth with the help of a brand new police procedure known as fingerprinting. The Mad Magician was directed by John Brom for Columbia Pictures and premiered May 19, 1954. It was released in 3D, much like House of Wax the previous year. Columbia wanted to cash in on the overwhelming success of the previous film and hired several House of Wax alumni to work on this picture too, including producer Brian Foy, writer Crane Wilbur, and cinematographer Burt Glennon. The story is basically a reshuffling of the plot from House of Wax. The reveal of Gallico's face under the mask is especially reminiscent of House of Wax, as is the final death trap at the end of the film. Some of the 3D gags are even similar, right down to a yo-yo performer who breaks the third wall, much as the famous paddleball man had in House of Wax. 
Overall, The Mad Magician is a fun film that is mostly forgotten nowadays. Filmed in black and white, I can't help but think it would be better remembered were it filmed in Technicolor. Though nowhere near as successful as House of Wax, The Mad Magician is still a fun, grand guggenol romp with ramped up violence and gore. This is one that Price fans will definitely want to seek out. Next up is Back to the Desert for Price in the 1955 film Son of Sinbad. Imitation dairy products in my cooking? Horrors. But how do you tell real dairy foods from imitations? Check the ingredient list or check for the real seal. It tells you at a glance it's a real dairy food. The American Dairy Association assures it. So, to get the taste of real cheese, real cream, read this or see the real seal. <laughs> Frightfully simple. You know it's real when you see it. 